back at it again, my Dollyverse friends. I'm Gypsy. If you don't know who I am, you need to know me. And we are going to do something long awaited that I have been pushing back and pushing back and pushing back. We're going to debox one of these really awesome dolls that I had acquired recently. It's a pink label Barbie collector item, and it's from the Dolls of the World series, Princess of the Korean Court. Real quick, let's take a look at the back of the box. So if you look in the picture, you'll see that there are some men here and some women there in the background. And these guys are like the royal court officials that work for the king and the queen, obviously. And this little funny looking thing that they are, well, they're not carrying it there in the picture, but they will be. <laughs> If, the, if they were moving in this picture, they'd be carrying that thing. This is a little contraption that the Koreans used to carry around the princess inside of so that she doesn't have to walk. But instead of it being like pulled by an animal of some sort, basically people would carry her around. And as she's walking past the people of the court, they would basically be like bowing down in front of it to show respect to the princess or whatever royal official happened to be inside there. It's usually women. And in Korea, our princesses were called Gongju or Gongju-nim. And that's basically what this doll is supposed to be. She's supposed to be a princess wearing traditional Korean princess style clothing. And here on the back of the box, you can see there are some other dolls there shown in this series as well. So there's a little bit here on the back explaining some of that stuff, but I'll tell you right now, the, the westernized spelling of a lot of the words that are used in Korean are very horribly uh, spelled. The phonetics are kind of off. So don't go, go by that. Ask an actual Korean person how to pronounce some of these words. But basically the traditional clothing that Korean people wore were called hanbok. That's the word right there. Hanbok, which is just means Korean clothing. And they come, of course, in many different styles, but they're kind of similar. And all the people you see in the background here are wearing some type of a Hanbok outfit in the picture. So the princess, this lady, is the one that is supposed to be depicted in the Barbie doll. And while we're at it, I also want to take a look at this piece, a different Hanbok that I purchased separately. It's not made by Mattel. This is just a random Korean costume that was available for purchase on eBay is where I got it. It's about 20 bucks. And that's like the most I've ever spent on just a random outfit for a Barbie clothes. So obviously that's not something I do on a regular, but it's really difficult to find my home nation's traditional clothing and doll form, you know? So let's take her out and I wanna show you some other little cool pieces that I have as well. This doll's box is kind of like a shoe box. The top just opens up. You can just pull it away from the rest of the box. And right in the back of the insert, you're gonna see that her COA and a photograph is attached. That's rare. And also parts of her stand. So we wanna make sure to take all of that stuff out so we don't leave anything behind. And after you take the doll out of the insert, you'll see that there's some, there's some uh, artwork there showing kind of like the walls of a Korean traditional house. And this brings back a lot of memories for me because my grandmother used to have property that was like this back in the day when we were little kids. And I kind of grew up in a place like this. So it's very nostalgic to see that. Okay, for those of you who care, her stand is just a two-piece stand, and it's got one of these little doohickeys up on the top. So she would just be putting her legs over them, like so. And that's basically how the doll is going to be displayed on the stand if you use it. Also, she comes with this really cool picture, this photograph. And the photograph is printed onto, like, cardstock. So it's quite thick, and it's not really, like, flimsy and it's just got more writing on the back talking about this doll. And then we also have the COA, which of course, normally they do have these COAs made with just like regular paper, like printer paper, but this one is also made of cardstock, so it's quite durable if you're into keeping these things. And in separate packaging, I saw that they had her little shoes. They're like a magenta pink kind of color, very dark. Uh, or I shouldn't say dark, it's, it's just very strong. <laughs> but I like the shape, I'm not sure if I like this color, but it does match her dress. 
So here is the Gongju on her stand posed as she looked in the box. The stand, I'm not really a fan of the stand, although I like that it goes underneath her dress and you can't actually see the stand. I feel like somehow they're gonna have to make a way for these stands to be kind of adjustable based on the doll's height because where this stand stops up in her thighs, it's kind of like she's just kind of floating on top of it rather than actually having her feet planted on the base of the stand. So if you're not careful, she could just easily topple right over. So it's not that secure. What can you do about that? A few fun details about this doll. She really appealed to me because of obviously her outfit, the hanbok dress is what I was really the most interested in but also her very intricate hairstyle. This hairstyle is customary of the royal family members in Korea um, wearing it with the braids like that wrapped all around her head and with these little ornaments, the little ornaments here and in the front as well in gold. It's a very intricate hairstyle that's hard to duplicate on your Barbie dolls because it requires for the base of the hairstyle to be on a very tight ponytail and the ponytail has to be like really snug to your scalp most barbies that have long hair they have so much hair on their head that if you try to tie it in that really tight ponytail you're gonna have a lot of bulk so i already know that if i take her hair down i'm gonna be really disappointed with how sparsely her hair is rooted she probably has a huge gaping bald spot in the middle of her head and all the hair you see is probably only around the edges of her head i don't know for sure i haven't taken the hair apart of course but a doll like this i probably wouldn't because if it is like what i'm describing it's going to be nearly impossible to put the hair back into this original hairstyle and i did want the doll specifically for this um hairstyle because i got really tired of trying to duplicate the style on my other dolls it's very difficult to do when you have so much hair on the doll's head and I'm not about to pull all the hair off of my doll's heads just to duplicate the style. It is what it is. But yeah, you just have to appreciate it for it being a display piece. These gold ornaments that you see there, very customary of what you would see in an actual person's hair in this traditional style. So another thing I noticed is that her arms are crossed underneath her the front of her shirt. This piece, the jacket, this is what we call the jogori part. And jogori is just like the top jacket that goes over the dress. See how her hands are crisscrossed here? And this doll is not actually, she doesn't have high levels of articulation. It's actually bent like this in her vinyl sculpt. So her body is just already sculpted that way. And it just stays bent constantly. So I don't know how much of a challenge it will be to take this outfit on and off of this doll, but we are gonna find out because I plan to rebody her onto a made to move body. Original body, this is how it comes. And her legs, she does have those straight rubber legs that have the joint in the kneecaps that bend the snap bend legs so it's definitely one of them old school dolls you guys but one of the things i don't really like is that her feet they're high heel style feet but her shoes are flat so they're not staying on her feet properly and that's kind of a nightmare <laughs> outfit she's actually wearing two pieces and like i said the top part with the bluish green colors this is her togori jacket and then underneath is her chima chima means dress and this is the part that goes under and it comes all the way up past her chest and then this part just goes down over the back of it now i do have another hanbok dress for my barbies that i want to show you guys that's structured slightly differently than this though it is also two parts but the way that it looks is quite different she has some ornaments here on the front and here on her shoulders that are basically i feel like it's a sticker like it feels like a sticker that they just plopped right on top there normally the hanbok dresses come with a lot more embellishments colors and different little details on them but it's not unusual to see them in plainer colors. It's just if it's for the royal family, usually they're a lot more fancier with all the different details. And the material that this is made out of is almost like, like it's like a polyester-y kind of a material, like a windbreaker jacket kind of material. I'm bad when it comes to the fashions, guys. I don't know how to really explain it in a way that uh, I'm sure it would make more sense. I don't know all the vocabulary for that. But you know what I'm trying to get at. So that's basically the look. Her head sculpt, this is Leah's face mold. And though I do like Leah very much, 
I feel like it's a little redundant for me in this collection. She, her face sculpt was not a big priority to me as far as adding this doll to my collection. It really was just the whole entire look and the style of the traditional clothing that I wanted to be able to display for my Korean dolls. I do have some dolls that I don't necessarily identify them as Korean, like Wailani over here in the corner. But nonetheless, she has these Asian features that can pass for many different kinds of Asian people. So if you are inclined to dress your Poppy Parker dolls that have the Asian style face-ups, then this might be a look that you could go with on those dolls. So I just wanted to see what she would look like in a humbug. And I really do love her in this humbug. I've had her in this thing for weeks and I can't bring myself to change her out of it. But I think she just looks so amazing in it. And I did try to duplicate one of these funky hairstyles that the traditional Korean women used to rock. She has a lot of hair on her head. So it's not so easy for me to put her hair in a fully braided style that's completely covering like her whole head so she is wearing her hair down for the most part and then i just gave her like a little top knot and some braids and the braids are pretty traditional in these old-fashioned hairstyles for the koreans a lot of people don't realize that koreans have in common with traditional africans is that we were very big on wearing braids in our hair way back in the day it was so super super common to see braided hairstyles for the koreans and a couple other things that i noticed they had a lot of stuff in common with africans so i thought that was pretty interesting but i wonder what that was all about i noticed also that these two dresses are very similar in color and the material that they're made from this one's a little softer it's not so like plastic baggy i guess it's very well made i think they look really good together i can't wait to display them all together but i did have my son Jinu make me some traditional clothing for the males because i did not find any for the males jinu has been making his own hanbok tops for himself he has a few different outfits that he's been mix matching with like regular modern style american clothing and he's been getting a lot of looks a lot of compliments from school and around the neighborhood he just wears them outside you guys like it's not a special occasion type thing but my son is experimenting with all sorts of fashions and things that he can make for himself so i just was so impressed by the stuff that he was making for himself i commissioned him to create some pieces for me to put on my and dolls i've got wailani I here who is supposed to be my polynesian doll she is an integrity toys doll on a made to move body and i put her in one of these korean dresses that i had ordered off of ebay which i think looks really good on her it's also a two-piece like the one that this gongju is wearing but it's just shaped slightly different this is the more traditional style that commoners would have worn rather than royal family and then we've got our japan ken here that i did do a light show and tell type of a thing with so if you want to go check out his details find that video on our channel and he is wearing full top to bottom piece that my son Jinu made for me. And he made the choki, the part that goes on the outside, which is the vest part to look kind of like a warrior style choki. So I really love the way that it looks. The shirt lined on the inside and the pants that he is wearing is also made by Jinu. And he has the Superman made to move body. It's kind of difficult to dress that body because most of the Ken doll's clothing default does not come stretchy enough or big enough to fit properly onto those bodies. So I'm really glad that Gina was able to make him something that looks so good on him and he looks really nice with the other dolls dressed in the traditional clothing. And then over here we have Tunjin on the end and I actually had Jinu make this top as well and it just went with some fashion royalty pants that I already had and it turned out really good so I'm so happy about that. Now next I'm going to take her head off this body and give her a transplant so she can have joints. I already have a body put aside for that which is the made to move purple top original purple top yoga doll. I don't plan on taking this hairstyle down for her. I mean I'm not really a big fan of this Leah sculpt right now so I don't know maybe if I can find another doll that I can duplicate a similar hairstyle with then I might just take the whole outfit off of this doll and put it onto that doll. Let me show you how easily her head just popped right off. Very simple. No sweat at all. I'm very interested to take a closer look at this hair because I really do want to duplicate this style on another doll and ugh, gosh it's just it's very complex <laughs> it's more complex with the doll not because it's a hard style to do on a person but just because everything has to be scaled down and then we're just gonna pop her head right onto this body 
and it should match the skin tone because she is the same skin tone as the purple top because it's like the most pale color available for Barbies. So this is actually how she looks without her humble on. Just in a regular outfit if you were wondering. You can definitely rock the regular clothes on this doll just fine but of course with her very high sadity hairstyle for security purposes we're just going to tie up these clear elastic bands around her shoes to keep them on these feet because uh the shoes are very flat and they don't really like the shape of the feet on the dolls they don't want to stay put these are like a hard plastic and they just they don't stay put as good as they could so that's a way to keep the shoes in place without having to struggle with them so now let's figure out how to take this outfit off we're going to open up this little snap right here the plastic snap there and here's her arms crisscrossed okay they come out oh that's good that's real good okay okay i think i think we're gonna be okay here all right so let's move the hands back and then just pull on the back part pull them off like this from the back but see, you can see here that the hands are already pre-bent. And they actually look very elegant. I do like the way they look. This is pretty cool. This might be a cool body to use for a different doll. Just for display purposes. It's very nice. And then we've got the snap clip back here as well. And we're going to take this piece off. It's like a tube top almost. But the whole thing is a dress. Like a, what do they call those things? A maxi dress, kind of like that. That's how you take the outfit off. It's not that big of a deal. It wasn't really too bad. She's got those snap bend legs that sound like when I crack my knuckles. <laughs> okay, so this is basically what the dress itself looks like. It's just one long piece. It has little clear straps. And if you are into sewing, like my son, this does not look that difficult to make. To be honest, my mom told me that when she was younger, she used to sew her own humble dresses too, and that they were really easy to make. So even though they look very elegant and complex, I guess, they're really not. It's really about the fabrics and the embellishments that you use for them that really like make them stand out, not necessarily the style of the cut of the clothes. And they're very flowy. They don't have these tight uh, fitted looks that a lot of the Western clothing have. So that's part of the elegance of the clothing is that you pay more attention to how pretty the actual clothes are rather than the person who's wearing the clothes. So you're not distracted by the person's body shape. And it's kind of interesting that this was considered very beautiful uh, clothing back then because there wasn't all this pressure for women to be dressed in such a way that they're basically advertising all their goods in order to compete with one another as far as who's better looking or am I pretty enough. These kinds of questions were kind of eliminated because of the style of clothing that was fashionable to wear at this time. If that makes sense. I hope what I'm saying is making sense to you guys. Here's how the dress looks without the top part. And because it covers all the way up to the chest, this is the kind of dress that Probably you could actually wear this with like a sweater or something over it for the doll and kind of mix match the styles so that it doesn't look always the same if you get bored with it. But traditionally in the real actual Korean clothing, you would never wear the dress by itself without a covering on top. It would be considered very inappropriate and like an incomplete look. It would be like going outside with pajama bottoms and then like a dress shirt on top. People don't wear their hanbok like this. But, I mean, for the sake of the doll, you could get creative and do some different things with it than whatever it already came looking like. And then before we crisscross her arms back up, I just want to show you guys what the actual arms of the top looks like. They're kind of like, there's like a little round dip here in the shape of the sleeve. That's very common, very customary for them to make the sleeves like that. The point of the aesthetic, the look of the clothing is for it to look very flowy, very nature inspired, very much like a bird's wings kind of, and graceful so that the movements of the 
people wearing the clothing just come off looking extremely elegant and soft and even with bold bright colors it still gives off this soft flowy kind of a feel so that is what the shape of the clothing is supposed to be doing for you and then let's see if we can cross our arms back up the way that they were let's see they were like underneath here they she tucked them underneath here okay and then they would just cover up their hands with the top piece yeah yeah oh yeah see i really don't like the stand you guys the stand is just not that great yeah i really do think the stand could be much better i really do like her with the made to move body because now she can pose whatever way she wants and that's something a little bit like what she might look like if she was bowing to the king and here is how she might sit if she was inside of the palace talking to someone they usually sat they kneeled very neatly and and ladylike when people were talking to them or they were just lounging around there was all this etiquette of how they could be posed how they should be posed i should yeah. say the princess of the korean court was very much like a like a real doll <laughs> i love how realistic it looks now that she's got some joints i love it love it love it and we're going to take out that other outfit and i'll show you what it's like it's exactly the same as this outfit wailani has on except that it's a different color the packaging itself looks like this it's covered with plastic protecting the clothing on the inside it's very flat it comes with this little money pouch here this one has a little butterfly ornament in the front this is just a decoration piece it's not an actual ribbon that you can tie and untie there's a clip there that's holding everything in place but traditionally it would be tied very much like this with just one loop and the two sides hanging off the side you want to be very careful removing things from this packaging because it's stapled to the cardboard I don't want to rip anything but this is what the chogwuri top looks like it's a separate piece it's got the rainbow lines all the way through the stripes which is very common that you would see in the korean traditional clothing then we've got the actual chima part which as you can see here this one's structured a little bit different from the one that we saw on the Kongju doll and it's like a wraparound style like this so the back part you would tie that up in the back to keep it closed. There's no Velcro or anything, no, no hooks or clasps for this part. A money pouch. Okay. And I've got my BMR 1959 Tango Sculpt doll here with uh, the Asian style face up. I will try this outfit on her. She's actually on a tall made to move body so i don't know if that's going to make a difference in how this thing fits which we won't know till we try it so let's go ahead and do that okay so first i'm going to stick her hands out in front of her like this so we can slide her chima on through the arm slits here i already put her hair into a very simple braided style and uh like a fishtail braid kind of a thing let's put this here for a second Okay, so I gotta tie this part up in the back. Okay, so how do we tie this thing? I feel like either I'm not doing this quite right, I'm not gonna make a big fuss over that. And then the jogwori part, okay, and see it opens like a, just a regular jacket. And because it goes on with the clasp in the front, we're gonna have to move her hands the other way to the back okay when your doll's clothing closes in the back you move their arms up to the front to get the clothes on and when they close in the front you do the opposite and her nails are already painted green so that helps because our her dress is green so nice coincidental match and then we're gonna put this on and as you can see with this chogwori top unlike the one that my Gongju, my princess was wearing it's actually very short in the front so it's not going to cover her chest area that well because they're not really designed to come down very far past your chest. But that's quite okay. That's the way the clothing is designed. Ideally, we want for this ribbon piece here to be laying kind of like flat down like this. And you'll see that Wailani's dress, see how it's more, it's like flat the way that it's sitting and then the same for my princess 
her ribbon is laying kind of flat down like that. That's what we ideally want for it to look like. This dress has been inside the packaging for the longest and that needs to be better manipulated so that it can stay in the in the position that it's supposed to be in laying down like this so we'll have to work on that later off camera i'm not gonna sweat it too tough the sleeves here have that same rounded shape here at the bottom that i showed you that the mattel dress came with so here's the finished look i really do like them all next to each other like this it really looks like the princess with her court ladies and they just look really good together. I was afraid that Yue would look weird in this outfit because her hair is not a traditional dark color like most Korean women back in the day used to have before they got into the trend of, you know, dyeing everything. But it actually doesn't look that bad. And it kind of reminds me of like a modern, uh, a modern day Korean girl with today's style but just in her traditional clothing like they would be during holidays or festivities because we do still wear the stuff. It's just that we don't wear it as everyday wear anymore. I mean, not everybody. Some people still do, but most of the young people don't wear this for everyday wear. So it's really fun to look at them all kind of dressed up like this and they just look so good together and I love seeing this. I wish I had more display space to really like do it justice in my house, but because our apartment's really small here, there's only but so much room that I have to work with. But I really, really love the way that this looks. They go together perfectly. And I can't wait to try these outfits on on some of my other dolls too, just to see how they look in different, on different dolls. I have some dolls that I consider to be Blasians like me, and I would love to put them in these outfits to see how good they look in them as well. I also have some dolls in different body types that I would like to explore these outfits on to see if they fit on the other body types too because they are quite loose like it's not a tight fitted look so I just I'm wondering if I could get away with putting some of my curvy dolls in this stuff so that would be fun and then I love the way that they look with the boys too because that just really completes the aesthetic for me of having not just the girls but the boys also rocking these old traditional style clothing I love it so much and I'm really glad that I invested in these outfits. I'm super happy that my son is able to create these looks himself. So now I feel like the sky is the limit. I could probably get some different uh, fabrics together and have him create some of these looks, bottoms of these dresses. See the gold embellishments here, prints here. They look really good on the bottom there. And that's just kind of, you know, what I was talking about earlier when I said that the royal families would usually have clothes that had more designs on them than just like the plain colors. But great thing about these Humboldt dresses is that you can actually mix match the tops and the bottoms any way you want. Even the brightest of colors you can mix and match them. So if you like this Chogwori top with that dress or that Chogwori top with this dress, you could just mix match them. Right now I have them in the way that they came, but Obviously, I'm going to end up doing a whole lot of different looks with these um, combinations that I have to work with and probably adding some more to what I have once I can give Gino the designs that I would like for him to sew for me. So I'm so excited about that. I thought they would look crazy without being able to duplicate all the fancy hairstyles that I wanted to try out, but I'm glad to see that they actually look okay without all the fancy hairstyles. And the princess with her fancy hairstyle is quite enough to drive this look home and make it believable. So I'm so happy about that. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments if you like this look and if you're interested in dressing some of your own dolls in similar styles of fashions. I'm kind of excited to experiment with the Togori tops to mix match them with even like Western style clothing with like tank tops and jeans. Cause I've seen my son totally getting away with those looks. He'll wear like the tops over some jeans or some, um, he'll put on like an American style vest over it. And it just all goes together really good the way that he's been pairing them up. So I love that a little, you know, a little nod to my culture. I can't get enough of it. The reason why I, you haven't seen me in a little while is because I had a mishap with one of my devices that I used to film predominantly with. I had to replace that device, you guys. So I had to wait a few weeks to be able to do that because money don't fall from trees y'all so that's why you haven't seen a video in a while but i didn't forget about you so 
we got them coming and I got a really really cool series that I'm starting up that I already did all the audio for and we're just in the midst of getting together the footage for the editing part of it so once those drop it's gonna be really fun and I can't wait for those videos to come out for you guys and they're not just for doll collectors but people who are outside of our doll community that may want to learn more about what we do as doll collectors I'm really interested in hearing feedback when that stuff drops and it's coming really really soon thank you guys for tuning in again my name is Gypsy and thank you for watching Broken Dolly TV with me I want you to subscribe follow me on Instagram and drop comments so we can hear what you guys really enjoyed about this video and what you want to see coming up if you want to check me out on my other channels that I have been making some cameos on and other videos on I've got anxiety ab where I talk about mental health related stuff my childhood and all kinds of non doll related things that affect my life on a day to day for those of you who are also affected by mental health issues autism asperger syndrome anything like that you guys want to go over and check those videos out some of you already are over there hanging out with me so thank you i'm also making cameos on my husband adonis's page honest adonis over on youtube and we talk about dating relationships marriage and all of that stuff over there so come over and check those videos out too and we'll see you next time right here on broken dolly tv have a dolly day Go, 저 전심 깨버리고 왜왜 욕하게 해버리고 수원이 왜를 짓고